What's the next question? What is the difference between a bishop and a pastor? Well, um, there really technically is no difference between a bishop and a pastor. Okay. The only thing the, the Bible says that the, a bishop is a desired office. It's, it, it's just an office. A, a bishop is really a person that is um, a pastor of pastors. So the responsibility is a little greater in that sense um, where you are now um, uh, pastoring other pastors. Okay. And um, it, it's just the same way as when you become a pastor, you're pastoring other people. And those people may be in the form of families, right? And so you're, you're pastoring adults, not just children, okay? So a pastor is, is, is a person that is a shepherd over um, the actual congregation, the people within the ministry. A bishop is really a person that assumes the position of pastoring those pastors because even pastors need to be fed. They need to be covered, you know? They need to have someone that they can go to for instructions or just to have somebody to help you. Iron sharpens iron. You know, we go through too. We have issues. We have family issues. We have, um, we have different things that we deal with. And, and let me tell you something, you know, the reason why I'm going to tell you the reason why a lot of pastors and bishops, um, have so many issues even with their flesh is because they don't really want to talk about it. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about putting your business out on the street, but when you start talking about the issues, right? And the flesh, then you first have to put yourself under subjection in order for that potent word to be potent in somebody else's life. So the reason why most of them don't really want to talk about it, that's because they want to still shack up too. But when you get your life right, come on now, you got to be honest. Mm -hmm. You get your life right and you begin to walk up right. It doesn't mean that you're perfect, but it means that you're willing to put it out on the table. Listen, you know, this is issues that our young people are dealing with, the members are dealing with, the pastors are dealing with. You understand what I'm saying? And they need to, to learn how to keep their flesh under subjection. And just like a, a, a lay member, um, the pastors have to pray. The pastors have to make sure they stay focused because they'll get caught out there just like anybody else. I mean, come on. David was a prime example. <laughs> right? <laughs> come on. All it takes is you to, 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 to see something that your flesh desires and you, you, you'll catch yourself going and floating in that direction and be like, oh my God, how did I get over here? And you're a pastor and you're a bishop. That's why pastors need bishops and, and you know. <laughs> we all need each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We all need each other. And um, nobody's perfect. You know, nobody's perfect. But you can live a clean life um, and you can live holy and you can live whole. And when you are whole, watch this, when the woman with the issue of blood, right, claimed, came to Jesus and said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I would be made whole, right? So Jesus goes, he didn't say, you are healed by faith. He said, no, your faith, when she finally got to him, she, he said, your faith has made you whole. You get what I'm saying? When you're whole, it's like your view of life begins to change. And you never want to be broken again. And so that's what you fight for. That's what you, you live for. You live to be in that whole state with God. Does that make sense? You know, mm -hmm. I, I I remember I remember you know it, it, in my walk I could tell when I was when I was when, when I was 
closest to God and when I fell away and when I'm not right, you know what I'm saying? You can begin to tell them so you know, okay, no, that don't feel good. Not feeling God's presence the way I'm used to it. You know what I'm saying? And so you got to give yourself something to get used to. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You got to give yourself something. You got to give yourself something to miss. Because if you've never been in his presence, then why would you miss being in his presence? You haven't even given him a chance to show you how he can love you. Ooh. I felt that in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Give him a chance to show you how he can love you and see what happened. You don't want to, you don't want to be out of his will. And although we may fall sometimes, it's like it's that desire to be back in that place where you need to be. That's where you know Kimmy saw coming at. We fall down, mm -hmm. but we get up. You don't just stay down and be like, well, I'm already here. I might as well just continue to keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> Father, forgive us, for we know not what we do. Yeah, we do stupid stuff. I've done it. Been there. You know what I'm saying? And so now we're talking about it. So what's the next question? Because you sound like you're working on a book. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one is the last question. Um, uh oh, what is the best our last way... question. Yeah. <laughs> what is the best way to stay positive as a Christian? To stay positive? Mm -hmm. mm. I believe there is a very powerful word that we as people don't pay attention to and it almost kind of goes back to what we said in the beginning and this word is probably one of the most powerful words um, in the English Bible that controls a lot of how we deal with things right and that word is attitude attitude is very much dictated by what you speak, what you release in the atmosphere. If you speak positive things, positive things happen. Positive things are, are, are released. Positive people, positive energy is released. Um, you speak negative, negative energy is going to be released. And so I believe your attitude you have to have the proper attitude. So when when the, when when in uh, Philippians when um, when Paul says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus," it, it, it's it's almost like a it's almost like a, a understanding that if you allow good thoughts to to uh, if you allow good thoughts to come out of your mouth then good things will come to you. And let me help you because um, a lot of thoughts we don't really release verbally. A lot of thoughts we hold in, right? But they're still thoughts. So you, you this is why um, in um, Corinthians when it says, um, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down every imagination that would try to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. What does that mean? That means you have the power to cast down imaginations. Imaginations is that in your mind is where, as a matter of fact, the Bible says in Romans, it says it is with our mind that we worship God, right? So it's in your mind that the enemy attacks. He comes to attack the mind. And so you have to make sure you keep your mind focused on the right things. Can I tell you something? Um, the mind only knows to do. It only knows to, to perform. In essence, if I tell you right now, don't think of a pink elephant. What are you thinking about? Okay. So, yeah, you see, all of a sudden you just, okay, the pink elephant. Because your mind only knows to do. So 
we have to learn how to direct our mind. Mm. Direct. Because there's energy coming from the mind. But, but what are you directing it towards? Because if I sit down all day thinking about my boo, guess what? You know you're single and you're going through your single season. But now you got on, you know, Luther talking about, ooh, man. what you think going to happen? You know, and, and we don't realize that we, we, we train our mind to think on things that is contrary to the things that we really want to be doing. You've got to learn to direct the thoughts that are in your mind towards God. And when you do that, right, you'll find yourself less and less thinking about doing things that are out of the will of God, right? And you'll be going, okay, wait a minute, hold on a second, get back over here. You got to tell your mind to get back over here every now and then. Because sometimes the mind just goes, huh? it, just, it just goes running. And you'll be like, oh, come on, I know I ain't the only person that ever been just sitting there just thinking and all of a sudden your mind just goes somewhere. you like, <laughs> Right? <laughs> and before you know it, you already in the thought, you in the moment, you in the action, and you already there. And you like, whoo, whoo. And so I realized the mind has the ability to be other places while it's while it's still in you. The mind is a powerful thing. So can you imagine if you took that same energy and you focused on the things, not just of God, right? But the things of that will help you be in better position to fulfill your purpose. I mean, Jesus was a carpenter. So I'm pretty sure he was probably fixing somebody's, some, somebody a, um, a chair or a couch or something. <laughs> but it just goes to show that his mind was based on building things and building people and build. You see how that goes? He didn't change. He was he was trying to build something. He was trying to build a new temple. Because man was trying to build a superficial temple, but God was saying, I need a people. He need us to be the ecclesia. He need us to be that people. He need us to be the ones that are going to be the body of Christ. Right? So in order to do that, he had to sacrifice his life. He had to give up his body. He had to give up his dream to be a carpenter. Oh, I know he wanted to be a carpenter so bad. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? How we, mm -hmm. we esteem earthly success over kingdom appointment. <sighs> oh, do you know what it means to be chosen by God? to work in his kingdom. But we'd rather do other things and we'd rather be this. And and I, I remember I, I wanted to be a superstar. At, at one point, I was like, I want to be a singer star. Or, I want to be a super producer. All of that stuff was more important to me than, than um actually uh, doing the things of God. I mean... I went so I went so as far as like I remember uh, one year in my life. I mean, I must have lost about a hundred pounds because I was dedicated. I went to the gym every day. Every day I was going boom, boom. Every day for seven days, and I lost about a hundred pounds. But I also lost my wife. I lost my children. Right, and when I say that, I don't mean like. On, in a literal sense, but I began to lose my relationship with my wife. I began to lose the relationship with my kids and my kids began to fall off, right? Because I was so caught up in trying to chase this dream that my kids and my wife were no longer important to me. Because every day, when I tell you every day I was at the gym, mind you, 
When they saw me, they was like, yo, dad. My son came to me and said, yo, dad, you look like The Rock. <laughs> I had lost so much weight. I had gained so much muscle. Every, I mean, walking down the street, yeah, people was like, whoa, man, you look great. Right? But my marriage was messed up. My physical body was in good condition. But my relationship with my kids was, was destroyed. You, you hear what I'm saying? And so I realized the Bible says that um, um, physical exercise profited very little. Doesn't mean that it won't profit you, but it's very little. So you got to be careful what you put your energy in. Because I put all of my energy in that. I mean, I was like dieting. I was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And now, does that mean you go back to uh, eating like a fool and doing all kinds of crazy? No. You just make sure you balance things out. You balance it out. Make sure that you don't cancel out your family while you're trying to chase, you know, or while you're trying to keep your physical body up. You make sure you don't cancel out your your loved ones, and you don't cancel out life and the relationships that are around you while you're trying to achieve physical success or any type of success for that matter. You remember that God is the one that's ultimately going to fight your battle, so you don't need to be Hercules when it comes time to fight. You get where I'm coming from? Because this, these are the times, you know, we understand, and I, I think every man should look good. You know, I'm going to get back <laughs> I think we all should look good. But when what where I went wrong is I put that goal before God and my family and any other relationship. I mean, I had lost so much weight, people who didn't see I had I had been away from like people for almost like a like a year. People who saw me after I lost the weight didn't even know who I was. So, I mean, I had lost a tremendous amount of weight and they couldn't recognize me. I mean, I, I literally walk up to one of my friends and they, they, they looked me in my face. I said, yo, dude, you don't remember me? I used to play for you for five years. <laughs> right? But we don't realize that we could get so caught up in changing that if you don't bring your family and those who you love with you, You'll change so much that they won't even be able to recognize you. And, and you still want me to marry you? Because I don't know who you are. Because you're not changing towards a, a, a form of purpose, but you're changing more of a, a form of formality and, and physical, you know, a physical appearance. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But just like I said, it just has to be balanced. I believe that every person needs to exercise. I believe that every person needs to eat right. I believe all of those things are important, even in the kingdom of God. I mean, these are principles that are taught in the Bible. That we ought to eat right. There are certain things that we just need to make sure that we do in moderation. You understand what I'm saying? But as a believer, you got to understand your mission for Christ has to be first. And God what is your desire for me? What is your plan for me? And let me make sure that my family, even because, you know, you can, I see a lot of people get so caught up in church, right? And their so-called mission for God, that they no longer have a mission to um, have a fortified family, to have a, a healthy family. That, that don't make sense either. You, I mean, and I, I did that too. I got so caught up in, oh, I got to be at the church. I got to do this. I got to do that. And I was so into, you know, being at the church, going to get the young people, doing the service here, doing the revival. And then when it came to my wife, when we came together, we had nothing to talk about. And all we were talking about was the church, the church, the church, the church, the church. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes you got you gotta you gotta be able to do things in moderation and you gotta make sure that you um make personal time for your family and personal time for your children. I hope I answered all your questions on tonight. Um on the well it started in the afternoon 
and now <laughs> we are in the evening. Um, but uh, I pray that um, <laughs> this has been uh, a blessed uh, time for each and every person that is uh, online. God bless you. Um, I, I mean, my daughter got me on this, so I'm pretty sure she'll have me back on sooner or later. I mean, I hope I did. Yeah. I hope I did well enough to come back on. She, she might be like, you know, I'm gonna have to take another <laughs> uh, month or so because um, it was supposed to be an hour, but uh, you extended it to like <laughs> five hours of talking. It's so good. It's you good know stuff. what? It's, it's so tough. crazy because we are. The reality is, is that we are in trouble. We are in trouble as a people. And if those of us who have the kingdom wisdom and the kingdom knowledge do not begin to share it with the people, we're going to lose a generation of people. And um, we already kind of lose it to some degree. But there are some. There are some. There are some. The Bible says he always have a remnant. He has a remnant of people who will serve him and who will do the right thing by him. So we we fight and we we press for that remnant. Those that wanna that wanna you know achieve that you know everybody's not gonna believe you know, but um somebody will. And I just pray today that somebody got something out of what was said and um has been blessed. This was good, Bishop. <laughs> this was good. We definitely have to do it again. Probably just ten questions, so. So guys, that wraps up the Q&A video with my bishop. I hope I answered all of you guys's, got all of your guys's questions answered. If you do have any other questions that you would like for him to answer, just leave them down below. I'm definitely compiling a list of more questions for him. Like I said, we're definitely going to do this again. It'll probably be done like 10 questions at a time because it took us forever to do this, but we got to hold on it we got to manage of it manage if that makes sense we basically got it together with um recording if you guys want to see any of the bloopers from when we tried to record this i'll leave a link down below to my facebook page because we literally tried this like six seven times so we got it right but um again i hope this video was helpful for any of you guys and if you are um a new believer if you have found that you want to become a follower of christ i hope that this video helped you in some form of fashion um so yeah i think that's pretty much it so give this video a thumbs up comment down below subscribe if you aren't click that little bell so you can stay notified when i post and i'll see you guys in the next video bye